So today on More Than 94, we have Angie Kiner, a former teammate, um, a, a Rogers State graduate and a 12 year law enforcement officer. And so today on More Than 94, we're just going to get into some questions about athletes that go professional other than sports and what they're doing in their life today and how they're being great as a, a non-athlete. And exactly some takeaways we can give current athletes today like if they're not going to go professional which the statistics show that most majority of athletes don't go professional in their sport Mm -hmm. so angie um today uh, we just want to ask you a few questions so just go give us a history of your sports background all the way to like your professional and and why you chose your profession and what you do today Okay, so uh, I started off playing for a team in Tulsa called the Tulsa Swoosh, uh, ran by a couple of just local people that had a daughter that wanted to play. Uh, before I got into competitive, I got picked up by a team called the Stars by a nice family in Tulsa, and they showed me, you know, what it was to like play travel ball. So once I got the chance to play travel ball, I was hooked. So when I went back to the Swoosh, uh, I played there for from. 10 to 14 and then from 14 to 18 I played for um, a team in Wichita and I switched because they were going to better tournaments had more exposure and even though it was a, a long drive and my mom made that sacrifice it really paid off just because of the people they knew and the people they were able to put me in front of uh, throughout high school I played for Jinx and we probably lost 10 games out of 4 years we won state championship one time after high school I went to Arkansas State University with uh, Shania and Jazz and Red Wolf. from Red Wolf. 07 to 08. And after that, I went to Butler Community College for a year. From uh, there, I jumped on the Georgia Bulldog wagon. That was short lived and I finished my college career at Rogers State in Claremore, Oklahoma. Awesome. That's good. So Angie, did you only play basketball? Because I feel like when the first time I saw you, I was like, who is this person? Because Angie's only like five foot, whatever. (laughs) But you were so athletic and just built. And I was like, I know she didn't only just play basketball. Or maybe you did. I I played softball when I was a kid, but I was horrible. Like, I was horrible. If I hit the ball, I wasn't stopping. I was going home. I knew for me to hit the ball was like slim to none. Yeah. So that was not my sport. Um, I ran track a little bit in high school and that also wasn't my sport either so I was like basketball we're gonna it's gonna make or break me you know at a young age my dad told me we don't have money to pay for you to go to college so either you're gonna go to the military or you're gonna get this scholarship so I wasn't trying to go to the military yeah so sports was pretty much like your your way out like your way to go to that next level go to college or whatever that looked like so did you did you you know, obviously you wanted to play college basketball in your whole journey through AAU, but did you ever have a time point where you said, you know what, I want to go to the WNBA? You know, I always wanted to play in the league. And then when I uh, tore my shoulder up, I was like 19 at community college. After that, I was, I was over it. I knew I need to continue to play to um, get my education. But my dreams of w- the WNBA were just very short lived. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know you wanted to go to the league. <laughs> so that's different for me because I never wanted to go to the league. And I just, and honestly, in my like, I just play basketball because I just love play basketball. I didn't even even trying to go to college. Really? Until the people started recruiting me. <laughs> I was like, oh, I can go to college. I'm in a, I'm in a sim- similar situation to Angie. Like, I knew that my parents couldn't pay for me to go to college. So it was either going to have to be a scholarship via academics or athletics. Um, But initially, I always said I want to go. I wanted to be the first female in the NBA. But of course, (laughs) 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 so so Andrea, so you said, I know you went to the Bulldogs um, and then. How, how did you get to become a uh, police officer? Is what I want. Like, what, what, what did that transition what, yeah, to happen look like for you? From, was this like when you were in college? Was it always I want to go into law enforcement? Like, what was the path there? 
you know what? I'm not a, I'm not a scholar by any means. Academics is not my strong point at all. And once I once I was hurt at, at uh, Butler, I was like, what am I going to do? My shoulder is so messed up. I can't raise it above my above my head. Uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm doing business, but I'm not good at math. So what am I doing here? Then I did um, physical therapy. I'm like, I can't even pass the science class. What am I going to do? So I started talking to my mom. She was like, you know, before life got a hold of me, I wanted to be a probation parole officer. So I was like, okay, cool. Well, once I left, when I was at Georgia, you can't major in anything you want to major in while you were playing for the women's basketball team. Wow. So I was like, I, I want to be a, um, a probation officer, but. Wait, can you say I, that? You said you couldn't major so, in. So they made you major in which they need you to major in just to play on the team? That part. Really? Wow. You had a couple selections that they had ends with okay. to assure that you were going to be able to be academically sound and you had to pick from those. So basically they had you in classes to where they knew you wouldn't fail so you could always be eligible to bounce that ball, right? Yep. Gotcha. Mm. And so I used so, to tell teammates, like, and even at Arkansas State, I used to tell, I have a particular teammate that wasn't making the grades or whatever. And I'm like, listen, this is their job. Like, we know that as a college coach, that's their job to to win basketball games. Mm-hmm. So yeah. at the end of the day, like, when you're not bouncing, that you are no used to them when you're not bouncing that basketball. You're no value to them. They're no value. And, but that's just their, and that comes with the job. Like, we can't be mad at that. Um, but, like, so you need to go to class. Like, after you, there's the statistics is low for you to go to the NBA. Maybe you can go overseas. Okay. Yeah. How long is that going to last? How like, long is that career going to last? Like, right. What, it, what does it look like? What does afterwards look like for you? Right. So you can have a season and an injury. Anything can happen, but you don't want to go to the class. And then you met. And then I see athletes being mad. Like, well, my coach don't care about me. I mean, at the sense, like if I'm a college coach, like I'm not, all I'm concerned about is the next class that's coming in. Right. Because I yeah. got to work in and I'm, I got a, a bunch of 20 year old girls. <laughs> my life my job is in the hands of 20 year old girls right, so right. you can't be all the way mad that they're just worried about the next yeah. thing but like what are you doing to set yourself up as an athlete but as a young woman I yeah. did not understand that mindset as a 30 year old woman I absolutely get it yeah but as you a you know, you said, yeah so once I uh, once I realized that you know I wasn't going to be able to major in criminal justice because that interests me, I decided that well I was voluntold that I was going to major in uh, psychology, mm. and I did not like that at all. So when things didn't work out at Georgia, I went to Rogers, and I wasn't even going to play basketball. I was just on campus being a student. Rumor had it, rumor got around that I was there, and they asked me to play. I said no. They asked me to play. I said, no. So I was, a, I was a practice player. Well, I was trying to get my academics right, trying to figure out what I wanted to do because I knew my time was ticking. Like, you know, I was about to be a, a grown woman. So I uh, said, I'm going to do criminal justice. This is the only time I've ever gotten a chance to actually major in something I actually I'm interested in. I met Dr. Clayton, who I'm still very tight with her today. And she helped me get all my credit straight. As much as I transferred and took this class and this class, I, I only took four and a half years to graduate. And that was due to her. Like she ran me through some tough courses, but I she was so passionate about what she did and how she taught that I bought into it. So once I um I left there, I graduated, I was um actually I had one more semester to go. I ended up going and uh, getting a job at Jinx Police Department. And I was just waiting for the probation and parole to come around. But I had so much fun just running and gunning. And I met some good people. And I was like, I like this. Yeah. So when probation and parole came around, I was like, no, I'm just going to stay here. Well, you know, as you get older, you want more things and better things. So I left uh, Jinx and ended up going to Tulsa. Oh. Did not know. I did not know that you went to rock. Like, I didn't know you didn't. You stopped playing. Yeah, I've done like people heard and they heard, and then uh, Coach Williams, who she's yeah. coaching for the now, yeah. she ended up calling <laughs> my mom. Right. Let's go. <laughs> she ended up my mom because she knew me from when she recruited me at TU, and she was like, Hey, did you know Angie's on campus? And we're offering her books and uh, room and board, but she said no. 
Oh, I'm home. Home. <laughs> <laughs> you play basketball. You're saying no. And I was like, yeah, I'm not playing. She's like, girl, you better get out there and play. You better get oh, go go to practice, be on a bench, and get them yeah. books paid. <laughs> right, man, man. So, like the first year uh, semester, I was a practice player. I came in from the spring semester. I was a practice player. Then that fall, that fall semester, I started playing. Is that a D one or D two school, Angie? It's a D two school now. When I was there, it's an NAIA. And I'm telling you, Coach, Coach Williams saved my love for basketball. Really? If it wasn't for her, I would have never thought about playing ever again. I would never look back. Why is that, though? Like, how 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 did your coach save your love for basketball? Because you hear so many stories where, you know, you have these athletes that go to different colleges or play for different coaches. And it's like, yeah, I will never pick up a ball again. And then you, you know, I love Georgia. Where you have coaches who really poured into it. Their um, their athletes yeah. and were life changing. I didn't feel that way till I left uh, Georgia, mm-hmm. and I love the girls at Georgia. It was the head coach that we did not necessarily see eye to eye with. Mm-hmm. So when I went to Rogers and I got under Amy Williams. She just treated you with respect. You know, she treated you like you were her daughter. You know, uh, not that I needed a mother figure, but it wasn't, there was no cussing. There was no um, talking to you on the side of their neck. You know, there it was none of that. It was like, we're here to play ball. Let's play ball. If you handle your business, you'll never hear from me. Cool. And when she was out there instructing you, it you can tell she was coaching from her heart, not from her pocket. Mm. And that's a difference, a huge difference. Not coaching from your heart, but from <laughs> not from your pocket from your book. Pocket. <laughs> from your yeah. heart, bro. That's, that's a difference. A, that's, a, that's important because the, the word that she mentioned was respect. Right. Like, don't treat me like I'm some whatever. So, 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 what do y'all think? So, like, when I am, I, I'm an athlete going into college, right? Yeah. How, how do we vet those? Like, what questions are we asking? Are we not asking the right questions from our head coaches? Or are we not spending enough time with the head coach and too much with the players? Because even though you have a good teammate, your teammates are going to make up for you coming to practice having to deal with a head coach that you don't necessarily vibe with. So, mm. what do we? Ask, why are we not asking the right questions in, on our visits? Because you don't know what you don't know, and no. you're so big eyed. You want to see like what the campus needs. like. You just don't know yep. at that age. I feel like you're so immature. You don't. Yeah. Know. So like, is, is that is that responsibility of our like parents to kind of ask that or not? My that, mom didn't. Know. Yeah. What were you saying? You know? But my, my mother didn't know what questions to ask. Her main question was like, is this going to be paid for? How much am I expect to contribute? Back. Uh, Back. Is the town safe for my daughter to be out and about in? Mm-hmm. What's her living accommodations? And what is the academics going to look like? Wow. Other than that, my mom didn't know what to ask about basketball. Like, they send those assistant coaches to sell you as a young woman. Oh, absolutely. And they do yeah. a good job of selling you, for oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. They're great. You, you, it make they make you feel like you are the top the, priority. Oh, you're the so oh. I had so I had different parents. So I had my stepdad was like, listen, and this is what he has he done like my whole life. So I know a lot of people don't grow up this way, but he's like, first of all, basketball is a game. It's yeah. just a game. So at the point that you stop having fun, you need to let it go. Really? He t- like literally, I always play until I have fun. If I wasn't having fun, I'm I'm quitting. And he's like, you can quit. Absolutely, I will quit if I'm not having fun doing it. And then when we went on our visit, he asked coach. He asked coach. Um, he was like, "How long are you going to be her head coach? Like, are you going to be here one year, two years? Is this a place where you go? You know how some coaches go here just to get to another level, and then you're going to move. Like, what is the trajectory? And he asked the question. But the conversation he had with me, he was just like, "Listen, you're going to college. Everybody's good. Everybody." Yeah. So everybody's yeah. coming from their high school team. They're they're with a star in the high school team. So he's like, your athleticism is not going to get you, yeah, playing yeah. time. He said like, you have to have a basketball IQ, and that's the conversation we would have. We had those conversations all the time, and I guess a and lot of people don't have that. Yeah, my stepdad. Okay. He was just like, listen, like you're good, but everybody when you get there, everybody's everybody good. gonna be good. So, so how do you, you set not, yourself apart. You got to have that basketball IQ because yeah, I'm. Yeah. They're gonna. He's like a coach is gonna put somebody that knows what they're to- doing mm-hmm. over athleticism. Yeah, yeah. He's like, because everybody's they're they're that girl from their high school team. Yeah, I was like, that makes sense. But we had that conversation. I think that's right. That does make a difference. Because if you if you are a kid going to school thinking like, oh yeah, bro, they recruited me all like, oh, bro, they was done recruiting, cause I was right. <laughs> <laughs> but like, no, they go in like with it, like, bro, I'm gonna start, blah 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 blah, bro. Like, no, like, 
But they you make know, you feel okay. good because they want you to come to their team. Well, that's I, that's I, their I job. I love that your stepdad had that perspective because I remember on the flip side, I feel like my mom was more aligned with Angie's mom mm-hmm. and my stepdad was more like, I mean, she wants to go to a school. Like, we want her at a school where she's going to play. Right. So that was, like, one of the first questions. Is like, she going to play? play? Right. And I do, I remember, it was one of the assistant coaches. I remember her face. And it was like, I really can't believe he's asking me that. But they were kind of like, yeah, she, she, she'll, she'll like, play, yeah. Like, because like, even when I was like, I could go, I could have went to a bigger school than a mid-major of Arkansas State, right? Yeah, yeah. But I knew, I was like. I'm not those people, those kids that do, they come and they see you and they're absolutely just killing folks. They sit on the bench and play behind my more for four years. You better be that good when you become a senior. Yeah. yeah but I right. wanted just to go play. Like I didn't go. To, I'm not going to college to sit on, the, sit bench. on the bench. Yeah. So I knew yeah. where yeah, I that could, was a non-negotiable. Not like, like, if I'm sitting on the bench, like because basketball was a game to me. So it's like yeah. I'm not here to just be like because I I'm not here for the name. So I'm not yeah. here to because oh I said I want to Duke. Yeah. I went to Arkansas and I didn't even know where Arkansas State was. Like I didn't know where Jonesboro, Arkansas was until we went to the school. Yeah, same. And I I'm took like, one visit and that was my only visit. <laughs> but my mom was one of my biggest advocates and I wanted her to be able to see me play. Right. And so Jonesboro was literally 45 minutes for work from and where so we lived. Did, yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm here. Like y'all treated me like a top priority. I like the coaches. I like the environment. It was decent. Yeah. It's it, it's. I mean, I feel like if you go anywhere, obviously you're going to have the thing like that's even with like, okay, for example, we can transition to like professional. Yeah. As long as you work for somebody else, there's going to be things that you don't like how they run their business. Always Always, until you run it yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what do you what do you like? You have non-negotiables. And then what are your thing? Like, "Uh, I guess I'm just going to have to deal with. Like, Mm -hmm. I think that's just in life in general. I agree. So but as a young woman. I, I couldn't sit here and be like, oh, you're right. You know, why, when I step on campus, I'm like, I I thought that everything was going to be great. I thought it was still going to be as fun as high school. You know, I was a complete fool, you know, and I didn't I didn't have the mindset I have now to say, OK, you got to take something, you got to leave something. Right. No, I want I want to take it all. I want I want the best experience. And when you're dealing with 15 other girls that are just as good as you are, mm-hmm. and you're dealing with someone's livelihood, you gonna have to. I don't say lower your standards, but being open to knowing that you need this just as much as they need it. Right. You, I, I needed that degree and that scholarship and that education just as much as that coach needed that W. So it's not gonna be perfect. Right. I got to be cool with it, with being with just leaving some things and just letting some things slide. But I wasn't mature enough to do that right. or to know that. Yeah. At, at that age. Now I look back. I'm like, yeah, that wasn't that bad. You could have. Yeah. Man, you could have stayed at Arkansas you State. Stayed, you could have stayed with yeah. that energy. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, and I think, I think kids get caught up in like names. Like, yeah, go yeah. to school because you need to get an education. If I, like I was to like, it's you have education. education. Like, bro, it's a game. Like, you're. You're replaceable. Like, know how to play the game. You know how to play the game. Know the game. Not just the game of basketball, but the game, game of life. life. Like, yeah. you, oh, you're, yeah. you're replaceable. Everybody's replaceable. Yeah. I know people are like, well, I have to drop security. There's no such thing as that. I'm sorry, y'all. No. You, no. They're going to replace you. If you if you don't show up to work and or you get hit by a bus, they have to replace you. They will replace you. And they will replace you. <laughs> if you're no not question producing, they will replace you. Exactly. If they need to make budget cuts, they will, they will replace, replace you. You are replaceable. <laughs> So that's like, yeah. you got to go into like, don't get caught up in the Like, I hate when yeah. kids get caught up in the name of the school. I'm like, bro, just go to, if, if you're interested in something, go. If they had that program, go to that school for that program. And, they, and then basketball is a bonus or football is a bonus. The the sport is not the thing. The education is the thing. Not a, is it, but I but now, like, now with the transfer portal, that's that's that idea is out the door. It's a whole, no, it's a whole new. Yeah. For the education, nah, these kids is in yes. that portal. Every and you you got the nil. It's like now I'm just going. Now I'm not even. Are we really playing because you love the sport now? Are you are you wanting yeah. who can give you the most money? Right, right. You know, but at the end of the day, all that's going to end. No, oh, yeah, Ex- exactly. That's going to end. The nil and hope will end. Major, <laughs> and I hope that you got your education. Way. So, so what's your advice to kids after, after sports then? Like, what are some of the things that they need to be asking themselves or the questions? I, I think that when you go to school, just like Shania said, you go for the education, you know, you go for, you know, the university and knowing that you're going to have to sacrifice 
some things to maybe sleep to get some more reps in and maybe sleep to hit those books a little harder and be cool with the process the process be comfortable being uncomfortable because this whole four years there's nothing sweet about it it's hard it's hard but when you look at hard work it, a real job your big girl job your big boy job and you've done all that hard work Life is way easier. I feel like because I've played D1, I've transferred schools a lot, I was behind on my credits, and I end up only being a semester behind, and I end up getting a good job. You know, all that, running in the heat and being talked to crazy, that made me who I am today. Mm -hmm. And I'm thankful for every bit of it. Like, even when I was riding my moped to class at Georgia crying, I'm thankful for it. It made me a better person. So just be cool with this. Yeah, yeah. So, so how do those lessons translate to your to your life after sports? Like, like how life in your in your career, in your career. and even your personal life, right? Because yeah. I feel like basketball is the game of life. Just sports in general, yeah. it teaches you so much about yourself. Yep. It, for me, like at my job, I have a I have a special. Uh, I'm in a specialty unit, so you have to be selected. I I I, uh, I apply for my position three times mm-hmm. before the first time I got passed over and I was like heartbroken I'm like well who's better than Angie Griner like this is <laughs> who's, hold on who's better than Angie Griner <laughs> yeah, like, oh, okay. Angie say it again who's better than Angie <laughs> Griner hey, what's your, better, what's better, your better, self talk bro like, like who's better than who's me better than that What's like one on one? And there's nothing cocky about that. But like, you gotta have that confidence. You have to have, like, you have to have that confidence in yourself. Because if you don't, who else is gonna believe it? Right. Like, why? Why? Why do I choose you and you don't even believe yourself? yourself. Exactly. A hundred percent. And I was selected by someone else that um, had more personal ties than Mm -hmm. I did with Mm -hmm. the group. Then my second time, I feel like I interviewed great, and I got passed over again by a guy in the same situation mm. and I'm just like well what am I doing wrong here so the third time I got picked I'm like I didn't do anything different it wasn't my time taking those L's and not getting that spot I just kept trying I'm, I'm gonna keep applying 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 to you guys pick me mm-hmm. it's no difference than running them sprints and running them sprints and not you don't look tired you don't look frustrated it's just hard I'm going to keep building my resume, put time in. I'm going to come to work early. I'm going to stay late. I'm going to pull that trash. I'm going to help my buddy out. When patrol calls, I'm going to go out there to the scene. All those extra little things. I'm going to do what needs to be done. Yeah. I'm going to be the dog. Like, I'm cool with being the dog. A lot of people don't want to be the dog. Everybody needs an Angie Kreiner on their team. For sure. Everybody needs an Angie Kreiner. I feel like Angie was going to always do the things that we that didn't want to do. Didn't but, wanna do. But Angie was, was going to do it. Ex- absolutely because I tell people all the time when I talk about basketball I'm like I hate it diving for the balls on the ground like I'm not trying to be on the ground oh we know <laughs> oh we know <laughs> I, got, I got in trouble so we said I didn't even care like I took I'm like that's just a part of it like I'm gonna get in yeah. trouble because I'm not finna I'm not finna and I feel like people was false hustling and you, and you know uh, yeah. one of the coaches dive on the ground <laughs> I'm not diving on the ground I don't, I don't, it's not translating got, <laughs> I'm not doing it yeah but like you but Angie would get out like she would do that like she would Angie's get and she was everywhere ride. she's I, gonna do all the things Angie she's was always yep and she's going to be in your face but, yep. and she's gonna talk her stuff <laughs> like, oh yeah Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. You know, I'm Angie here. was in. Yeah. The, you knew she was on the court at all times. Like, there's yeah. not. Yeah. Number number twelve. Get number twelve. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, like one of the coaches when they were recruiting me, they were always like, "Do you have the intangibles? Do you have the intangibles?" I, as a young woman, I didn't know what that meant. And so, you know, I'm I'm ask Jeeves because well, I don't think it was Google back then. <laughs> yeah. 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 Facts. Ask Jeeves. <laughs> uh-huh. okay. I'm looking like, where are the intangibles? Like, oh yeah, like these are things that. People can't teach you. You just have yep. them. You just got So them. when I went, especially like my whole life, but especially like Arkansas State, I'm, not, I'm having intangibles because this is what this coach talked about and they like that. Mm-hmm. So I always try to have those. But in life, that that was freaking, that was 14, 15 years ago and I still live my life on the intangibles. Mm-hmm. I will stay up and work a double. I will go in on Saturday and stop a car. I will do everything you don't want to do. So when judgment day comes and they're trying to see if they're going to cut you, if they're going to keep you, you can't say that Angie wasn't there. Angie didn't go above and beyond. Like I went beyond to do what what needed to be done and more. Every time. 
I'll stay late. I'll, I'll, I'll do your property. It doesn't bug me any. You know, as long as I'm, I'm clocked in and I'm getting my paycheck, I feel like I'm blessed to, to get a decent paycheck in the, the profession that I'm in. So it costs me nothing extra to 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 be that dog and be consistent and always trying to get it. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, okay. So how does that translate into your personal life? So I know because you're married. I know you yes. have kids yet, but like, how does those intangibles now translate into your personal life? What What are you doing outside of your career? So uh, for a while there, I ran a security business. It was me okay, and so my you're entrepreneur. Department. You're an entrepreneur. Uh, she was also in the police department. We had like 30 apartment complexes in Tulsa. Uh, and we had... 15 in Wichita so we were we were were rolling um that was that really test how much how tough I am working full-time and then trying to run a security business which is 24 hours a day that was really tough but I don't regret it it was very uh, beneficial to my family so I can't complain since I've moved on from there I'm trying to get into uh rent some rentals okay real estate game let's go yeah, uh, some possible Airbnbs. I'm I'm really trying to make it happen on that because you know I feel like to make it the long run and to maximize all my options and I have to do 25 years of the police department to get my uh, my benefits. Mm-hmm all of them but also I need that residual so if anything arises while I'm retired I'm not thinking like oh, I might need to get another job I'm, I'm really trying to work for myself by 47 that's good that's good goals by 47 yeah that's right point and so how, how did you start getting into um real estate I know I talked to you way back you had first bought a house that I think you purchased and then I think your mom moved into it or, or something my mom moved into it for a little bit, and then I had just had some average Joe's renters. Um, yeah. Really good. That house has been a blessing to me because when I bought it, it was in just a regular area, but now it's also growing. There's this um, this strip called Brookside. Mm-hmm. It Brookside's expanding, so all, all the bars and the boutiques are on Brookside. Oh, okay. And all of the, the Brookside's coming closer and closer and closer to where this property is. And it's really been a blessing to me because it's always, I've always had a little, a little money from it. You know, I never thought how I could, how can I turn this one rental into two? How can I turn two into three? And now that I'm at my this point in my life where I am like, I want to work smarter, not harder. Exactly. This is there you the, go. I already got my foot in the door. So why not just spend some more rentals out? Right. But I think that's something unique about our journey, too. It's crazy how we all started basketball. We played at A-State, mm-hmm. but in some capacity, we all are in the real estate game. Right. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's but good. It's good for these young kids to see that there's life outside out after sports. Life you after sports. And they can look up to other people out besides a, a professional athlete. Like, they, sure. there are other mentors that maybe they can look up to you Angie if somebody wants to be in law enforcement and then branch off to have their security company and you're not a a famous person in, in the league or whatever you're not you're just a regular person that's still exceptional in real life yeah it's, it's okay not to go to the league right and it's, it's you're more relatable so like yeah it's okay to get your degree and to get married have kids and live you know your white house pick a fence that's okay Life, a soft life, <laughs> a soft life, <laughs> a plush life. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. Everybody, oh, I'm the league. Oh, I'm the league. It's okay not to be there because life over here is great for me. Yeah. yeah, life is good. Life is good. Life is great. So it's okay to be. It's okay not to be famous, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> I also, I feel like you're more relatable when you're your everyday. Uh, uh, so not relatable. It's more like. Uh, shocking or stunning mm-hmm. or, um it's more impressive when you're your everyday like you like all three of us you're your everyday woman and you're still breaking down gender barriers mm-hmm. racial barriers with our careers with our businesses you know i think that's cool that's good though no i think that's yeah. good yeah so so as a professional entrepreneur like what are some of the things that you do to continue to grow professionally and personally and with all the things i mean i so one um one thing i've done to 
put myself out there with other like-minded business individuals. There's this private, it's a members only club in Tulsa called the summit. Mm-hmm. And it's where a lot of business, young business professionals all the way to 80 years old professionals, they all go and they meet, they meet, they bingle. You may smoke cigars one day. You may listen to music, eat food. You can just go up there and just hang out. There. <laughs> always someone there that you can learn something to from. Mm-hmm. Always, I'm always trying to put myself in a position where I could I could pick up something. Even from Shani and Jabbar, I see your videos. I look at your videos. I watch them. I, I take that in. I'm always looking for just a little a oh, little nugget of, knowledge. of the game. Yeah, always go. a student of life. Always right? a student. And you and never feel like you're better than you know a, a small part of that or a thirty a thirty second video that your friend may have posted. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's some good stuff to stay. Yeah, you got to stay growing. I think we just don't. You never, you never arrive. Like yeah, you never yeah. arrive. So you always, they always room for improvement. Everybody here. Like once grown. you get to that point where you think that you know everything, it's like okay, right? Come on, no. And what I've learned because it's no way. Yeah, and, and I've learned because I'm not that person to just go ask questions. I feel like I can figure everything else out, but you can like ask questions yeah like, it's fine to ask questions and i feel because i fall into like bro i figured out i'm smart enough like yeah i ain't gonna I'll, ask I'll just, do it. Try to do it. but then you realize the importance of collaboration absolutely having yeah. that yeah. Yeah, having building those relationships yeah because i think yeah. too you were playing ball in college like you don't really value like you value the aspect of teamwork right but really building those relationships i feel like some of the some of our downfalls of us not winning, winning. Was that we just didn't have that? We didn't have that bond, that closeness, that relationship that mm-hmm. we should have built. Mm-hmm. No, we never. I, I'm, I'm thinking like enough. My five years here because I was hurt. Yeah, yeah. Like we we was we just kind of practiced. Yeah, we didn't really have like for me anyway. Like I didn't have like a, like a huge relationship with any. I think maybe Angie because we were in the same class. With like because y'all were in the same class. I right. was like Nini. How did you get me to do a podcast? <laughs> you never talked to me in college <laughs> for real. Like. How, how, I don't how even are know. We here today. I have no idea. <laughs> but we, if you, if, but when you think about it, and we talk more, there's a lot of commonalities between us. Absolutely. And then we used to have like, like weird, not weird conversations, but like when we did have conversations, it was like legit, authentic conversation. Yeah, yeah, it, it was yeah. like far and few between. Yeah. But it, it didn't happen that often outside of court. But yeah. But I feel like too, because Angie is more extroverted. Oh right? yeah, like all my friends are extrovert, extrovert for sure. Well, I think we both of us are introverts, yeah. and so we thrive off of like, like all my friends are Angie intentional conversation. Yes, yes, yes. Like I would have never had friends if the extrovert didn't come say, "Hey, yes, talk to me." <laughs> yes, yes. Like, uh, you want to talk to me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it has to be about. It has to be intentional. Like right. I can't just talk about surface level things. It has to Absolutely. be very intentional for me. Yeah, yeah. So that's what Angie was for me because, like, I would never talk to Angie. Angie came talking to me. <laughs> she did. That's just her personality, and yeah, most that's yeah. and that's all of my friends. Like, they like, no, we need to never like this. Came like, can I be a friend? Like, nothing. And that's like that's a weird question. Like, yeah. we're gonna be friends. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? But that's uh, another thing. That's another thing of like just being in college and learning and growing. One thing that I wish I would have done was be more intentional about building relationships mm-hmm. and going outside of my comfort zone. So maybe joining different groups or being more active on campus versus just solely focusing on basketball right. and getting the grades. I wanted, I wish I was more involved on campus as well. Cause that yeah. prepares you for certain things in life too. You know, And then some stuff we couldn't even do though. Cause we were traveling during the week. It went like football only traveling. Yeah. Yeah. Cause there was certain things like in my, the business department, they would have on a Wednesday night and we traveling or we have a game or so some of that stuff we missed, but yeah, I wish I would have been more involved. I wish I would just for me in general, like, like you said, being intentional about conversations with your teammates. Yeah. I just feel like, I ne- there's like why don't we know more about each other yeah like we like, should we should we spent four or five years in the trenches like why don't we know yeah we don't and that, yeah. yeah and that's unfortunate and I feel like maybe is it a girl thing I feel like guys do a better job at that maybe like being yeah. more like hanging out with each other yeah. out, outside yeah. of basketball I feel like yeah. the guys do it they might not have deep conversations but I feel like they are always around each other yeah yeah and girls are not so much yeah Cause it's kind of like, mm. so. but girls can be catty. 
Right. Yeah. Very. Very. very Some of those on the team that I felt were very catty. Yeah. And they weren't cool to be around. So Nene was telling me that, right? And I guess it, I'm like, where, where, where was I? Because it's just really, you, you, you were right you didn't erase your memory <laughs> from the whole college experience. <laughs> so like, I did not erase my memory, but I guess just certain things just weren't as apparent to me because I feel like when you're going through your own shit, like you just don't. Maybe that's what it was, and you kind of like block it out. And, but Jazz, you were like, as a t- like, you just was like, whatever, like, who cares? <laughs> like, it yeah, doesn't. very much. Very like, like nothing. You were so unbothered. Like in, in me and you are like probably the same. Like unbothered, but I still knew what was going on. But Jester was like, whatever. <laughs> okay, like who cares? <laughs> like it ain't about me, so I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Jazz was sitting next to the girl the whole time and she didn't even know it. No, Jazz is like, uh, you like never knew. Like, Jazz was, I don't know what you were doing. Like, yeah. Jazz, it was, was like, I, Jazz like, the whole time. That, like, that happened? I'm like, well, no, Jazz. I realized the problem later on, mm-hmm. right? I realized the character, I realized a lot later on. Right. But I guess I just didn't know how it was impacting specific people. I got you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, that, that individual really, really, really. That was one of the factors that when I left, I was like, I'll never miss that person ever. I, yeah. I, I miss quite a few people, but I wasn't mm-hmm. mature enough to try to reach out and stay friends. But that person, if I saw him today, I wouldn't even say hi. Yeah. If we're talking about the same person, I have the same sentiments. <laughs> Let's be clear. The initials are EJ. <laughs> Send help. Don't be Drop the sound bar. <laughs> take, 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 we're going to edit that out. <laughs> Oh Lord! <laughs> but yeah, I think that's important because I don't like who who besides like I, I mean I kept with and I'm terrible at keeping up with people by the way. Yeah, but like yeah. if I if I kept up with anybody, it, it was A and G. Yeah, and then you three for the most part, mm-hmm. and that's it. Like I, I can't sit here and say I, I'm keeping up with anybody else. Yeah, no, no, so, I agree. But I thought I had a connection with you. It has all. Gave me older sister vibes, but I feel like she would be my older sister. So I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to bug you with this. Ooh. But I've always looked up to Jazz and what Jazz was doing. And I've always low key kept up to like where she was and pictures of her kid because I was always wanted to be Jazz's friend. I felt like I vibe with her well. He was a role was model I? for us. Was I? Absolutely for me. <laughs> <laughs> she gave me very much older. But no, we did. Not, we didn't. I wouldn't say we just like looked up to you, but like you're the only one like in the cast above us that we yeah. really kind of like. Okay, that's like we was okay with jazz. Yeah, it was yeah. other like we probably did the most talking to you out of anybody in your class. <laughs> Besides, um, B House, I would say B yeah. House was also a good yeah, example. Yeah, in y'all group. Yeah, shout out to. But B. jazz for J- for me, jazz seemed like she had her head on straight, and I, and I always felt like in my heart that jazz was gonna be a good woman. Yeah, because you remind like she gave me older sister mm-hmm. mom vibes. I liked it. I see that? I received that. She a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> she a hoe wife with three kids. Like, yes. But you oh, had to be. You had to be mature early though. Like I you had, had to, to get mature. We had to go. I had landed. You had landed. Twenty one. All right. At twenty. Oh, wow. And I feel like when you have kids, from most people, I want to say, oh, I feel like it automatically like happens like you had you had to be it, mature you had to either it happens or it is going to take like it, it will take over your yeah, life like right. you're just yeah because i even tell jazz i was like i don't think i could have i would have never came back to basketball i don't know how i came back i don't know how you can because i, I think the coach uh, didn't think you were going to come back i remember when i told coach b like he cried we cried and i was like <laughs> <laughs> we all cried together we're supposed to be good this year but <laughs> jazz messed it up you <laughs> But yeah, I'm like, there's no way I having kids at 30 and I'm over here like wore out. There's Struggling. no way I could have been an athlete. Blows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going full time student, athlete, and being somebody mama. Yeah, yeah. And coming no back, way. like missing the whole season and then coming back to play. Uh-uh. I would have been like, I had to trust <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Parenting is parenting is ghetto. Is hard. It's ghetto over here. It's, it's very much ghetto. <laughs> But very much rewarding. Yeah, it is. It, it's ghetto, but it's rewarding. So, Angie, and we don't have to put this in the, when we do it. But are you? Do you not want kids? Are you having kids or no? No, I had a hysterectomy like two years ago. I'm out. You had a what? Hysterectomy. I had a hysterectomy two years Why? ago. Why? I had went to. I was feeling real dizzy and uh-huh. sick, and I finally like I was like I have to go to the doctor. Yeah. And she's like, we're gonna take blood. Da da da. I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, she like, you look fine. We're gonna send your blood off. And 
we'll see what it says. All right. So I get the phone call at work. I'm sitting at my desk. She's like, are you alive? I'm like, what's wrong? She's what? like, come out right now. I'm like, what is wrong? If I'm riddled with cancer, tell me now. <laughs> Don't go to your office do that. She's like, you're, she's like, I'm trying to get a hold of you. You're missing half your blood. I was like, what? what? She's like, if I were you, I would go straight to the hospital. Well, my husband works for the railroad, so he's always out of town. So I'm like, well, he can't take me. And my mom works a job that she couldn't leave work. My sister's in Dallas, so I go to my friend Allie's house. I, I go over there, I take my gym bag, and I say, I'm going to take a shower. I need to take me to the hospital. So I shower up. And she's like, what do you mean, take you to the hospital? I go, they say I'm missing half my blood. What? So she zipped me over there. I get back in there. They're like, yeah, you you need they gave me like three bags of blood. Cause you're supposed to be at a 12 and I was at like a six, seven. Then a couple days. So she was like, if you don't get this fixed, um, you're going to be right back here with the same issue. So, uh, I go to my gynecologist. So you're severely anemic. Every time you have a cycle, you're just getting lower and lower and lower. And you're not replenishing. Wow. So you're not going to be here the next three, four months, but the next year you'll be back. And she's like, if you want to have kids, your time's now. So I talked to my husband, like, Hey, are we doing this kid thing? Or are we not? He's like, I don't want to. So I stood on it a couple of days. He's like, I will if you want to. Stood on it a couple of days, a week or so. I was like, I'm cool. And so I scheduled my appointment and had his wreck me like a month or two after that. Wow. But I feel better and I'm not dizzy. I'm not seeing little squigglies. I don't feel like I'm going to pass out. Yeah. I feel way better. Like I was bad. So you've been like, like my whole life and didn't know it? Like even basketball? Yep. Dang. Didn't know it. I would go to work and I would go like sit down at my desk for an hour and then I would go do like surveillance and then I'll wake up because I fell asleep. Wow. Because I was so anemic. And I, I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, I've been out here like three hours by myself. Like, not good. Oh. And so when they did it, I was like, I feel so much better. But, you know, I'm always like that. If I feel like I need to have a kid, there's some kid out there I can adopt that yeah. needs love. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but I'll, I'll babysit y'all's kids all day. What? Oh my God, sign me up. Hey, right. right. come listen. on. Yeah, yeah. Listen. 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 Drop them off. Listen. Listen. What is your yeah. schedule? Right. Your when will you be back in Texas? Come to <laughs> college station. I'm, I'm free Saturdays and Sundays, and then I get a lot of comp time in my job, so I can take three, four days off, and we'll be happy. Just let me know. Oh. Hey, what? you got a babysitter on deck? Uh, oh, what are you doing no. on April 22nd? <laughs> right. Oh, babysit. Anytime. We'll go to water park, go to regular park, go to the bathroom. Yeah. We might have to re we might have to follow up. Yeah. Run it back. Uh, run it back. <laughs> Angel love the kids. Oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I think that was any like last takeaways for any Angie Kriners out there that may be contemplating of, you know, should I go should I go to school? Should I should I play sports or? I think just do with your heart. Yeah, your heart tells you to go. Yeah. But if you're gonna go play sports, be cool with the, the journey. If you're just gonna go to school, you know, do your best. But at the end of the day, do not leave without your degree. I think a lot of us tend to go to school mm -hmm. and play, and when our time's up, even if our credits don't match where we should be, we just leave. Yeah. Don't ever do that. Stay, because you will never regret getting your degree. Yeah. Never. Also, try to major in something that you think you can apply in the world. I know it's asking you a lot at eighteen, nineteen, decide what you're going to do the rest of your life. But I think encouraging every kid to uh, major in uh, sports management is not fair. Yeah. Because a lot of us end up coming back to yeah. get masters because sports management didn't cut it for us. Mm. So I just, you know, get your education. You never go wrong with it. Yeah. Randomly, Angie, have you ever thought yeah. about coaching? Yeah. I just feel like you would be an amazing coach. The way that you break things down, the like, you know what it takes. You know the work ethic. I feel like you know how to pour into, you know, a young woman, an athlete. Like, I feel like you could really help mold them. Have you ever thought about coaching? You know, I, I don't think I have the patience, but also the basketball <laughs> IQ part of it that Shania speaks about, I think I like that. 
you know, I'm like, go hard, play hard, put your body on the line, everything else will work. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that is it. You are right. Edgy. Yes. At least you know that, though. At least you know that. But you know. Right. And you're okay with that. And it's fine to be that. That's why, like, I feel like you had, like, you know how to recognize strengths, weaknesses, and that's a part of being a good coach. Like, how do you navigate through that? Like, most people can't break it down to that level. Right. Like, you can be a coach, but maybe you have an assistant coach that it that does have that IQ that, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And it's offset each other. I I wouldn't be just the best to break it down. I'm just like, bro, do this, do this, do this. (laughs) <laughs> but you be a more of like this is how you do it I'm more like I tell you it and you should go do it right. <laughs> like yeah. you should be athletic <laughs> enough to do it I'm like listen I'm telling you go help side they're like what is help side what is help side <laughs> like bro what well, do you I mean, mean? Have to, have to also like watching people play and not play with passion oh the easy or yeah. not go hard yeah. I can't can yeah. how can you not like my thing is you have however many minutes how long is the game 40 minutes 40 minutes 40 minutes go all out and you never over. know but you never know when this is your last time dribbling the ball like, you never know right go all out go hard give it your all right because i feel like that mindset like that excellence mm-hmm. mindset that mindset of i'm gonna go hard give it all i have like that translates into life Rest, in general yeah. right yeah right. yep. so if you if you're lazy i feel like it translates over especially mm-hmm. for in the in it's like statistically like for women in general like how you the 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 ones that had the good grades are the, the ones that were the necessarily was on the floor. Mm-hmm. If you think about it, or at least had passing grades. And yeah. for boys, that's so much you could be exceptional athlete and be terrible in the classroom. Absolutely. Okay. But for girls that feel like you on the honor roll, you're probably the either if not the best player on the team, the top okay. score, top something. Well, <laughs> <laughs> three. I mean, three degree. Because I've seen some. Who? Girls. Who though? I'm not gonna name names. But I'm just saying, like, <laughs> if they were not good in the classroom, they weren't on the floor. They might have been a, a great athlete, but they went. They were ineligible. Is what I'm saying. Oh, okay. You okay, see what I'm saying? Okay. They were ineligible. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Everybody that I mean, was on the you floor. Have was some the girls, okay, but you do have some that weren't this, you know, whatever. But they had a major or classes that weren't as difficult, so they made sure that they could. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. So, but that means that they wasn't really that smart. Though, but like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> no, it, right. does, it does translate over. Though. Like, if you're a lazy player, if you're if you are a person that does does what you need to do, like, and I'm gonna say does what you need to do, but like, um, I'm not I'm trying to look for like not scrappy, but you know how those those players like they make it seem like they're a hard worker. Hard. Oh, I hate. Oh, you see what I'm saying? Like, but they're no, really not. People that don't really. It's like you can tell. What is the word? I don't, and I can't I think of the word. Maybe, Angie, you they, like they out. portray, they like they're, they act like they're just this hard no hard worker, but really, they're not. You're not. They're selective with it too. Selectively, like when they want to yeah. be, and they can read the room very uh, well, mm-hmm. so they knew like how to make sure that the coach would see them in certain moments, in certain lights. Like, they were not going. Like, <laughs> No, girl, stop. stop. I, you're right though, I think what, when you said that your your grades translate to you know the court and your hustle translates to the court, but that also translates to your life after mm-hmm. basketball. Yeah. Yeah. and then in return, that translates to what kind of life you're gonna be to. The, if you're if you're the type that's gonna do the little things, you're gonna do the little things at home for your spouse. Right. You know, if you are you make sure that everything's right at the house. So all of this, even though it's basketball, all of it translates. It all of how you approach it. Yep. Yeah. How you approach that. Yeah, it is. As much as we don't want to think about it, but it, it, it does. And I, we have been in the conversation with Jabari. I'm like, what you, how you approach football, for example, it, it has to, it translates. Oh, it translates over. So when you are really out there going hard for only a moment, and because it shows up in your life, we're like, okay, I'll just, I'll just work hard for just this time and then I'm going to ease up for next time. Yeah, because you're always going to have those moments in life or those moments when you're doing something that it's like, okay, I really don't want to do it. You don't so want, like, I, sometimes I don't want to be at a brush. From like that discipline, that tenacity to just do it in those moments of. Yeah, I get because you're like, how do you, I'm like, listen, like, that's how I've always approached it. Like, some days I do not want to be a parent. For sure, don't yeah, want to be yeah, a parent. Yeah. But I have to. I have to do it, and I do it, and I might be disgruntled about it. But I still but I'm gonna do, do it. it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get up and do it. I will feed you all today, and I will play with dinosaurs and do all the things, even though I just absolutely do not want to. But I do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. I could be that, and I could be that parent where, like, bro, 
go get on that tablet and I ain't got to deal with you. <laughs> like, <laughs> they <ain't some> <laughs> So it's just, yeah. oh, yeah. I think it's interesting how it all, it all translates over. Mm-hmm. And then just your yeah. upbringing, too. I think that plays a, a bro. For sure. I feel like it, that's your foundation as like what, how you think about their outlooks on life. Mm-hmm. That foundation from your parents. And even if you have parents that are not necessarily, you know, the best or like you know kind of a little off their rocker a little bit yeah but. yeah 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 so i think this is good this was amazing no, like so. i said i wish i wish we could have had you in person angie because for sure i hope we get to do it again yeah yeah we'll have to do it again so. nini do you want to do the no look segment where we ask yes, angie. Maybe angie about four to five questions yeah angie these these are questions that are kind of debatable but it's supposed to be like a quick rapid fire Literally, cool. just answer them um, quickly. Um, quickly, right? Don't Look, think about it. Just say, "Hey." It's like three to five three questions. To five. Have a if we can think of three to five questions, so who's the greatest of all time? Basketball, Jordan. basketball, basketball. Jordan, Jordan, okay. Jordan. Why? <laughs> Why? He does a little everything. He does a little everything. Well, and, and I, I just. It's yeah. his attitude, right? Like Jordan, it's it's the mindset. Jordan was a. He was a winner. He's a winner. For sure. He's clutch. Winner. He's all the things. Yeah. Yeah. Best. Um, WNBA player. Yeah. Obama. Greatest of all time. WNBA player. For me, I say Lisa Leslie. Oh, oh no. Lisa, Lisa Leslie. Leslie. <laughs> no, Angie. You could have said like <laughs> Tina Thompson or something. <laughs> Not really Lisa. Tina Thompson. Bro, Tina Thompson is out there yet. She like Dennis Rodman me. of the WNBA. Me. Me. With, with the okay, lipstick. Okay. With the lipstick out there. I'm going to have to go pull up stats. Quickly. Like, I'm going to have to pull up the numbers because we cannot. Uh, Tina, Tina Thompson. Thompson. Lisa Leslie. By the way, <laughs> shout out to my cousin Natasha Byers. She won two championships with the LA Sparks. But Tina Thompson, she was that. She was getting. She was. She was a utility player. Like she was getting rebounds. She was Dennis Rodman. I guess she was. I guess. Can't compare her to to do I guess. <laughs> I guess so. But I'm thinking like I was thinking like Cynthia Cooper Show Swoop for sure. Okay. Yeah. But you didn't think on Lisa Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna right. me off the stage. Make it good. Make it good. I don't know. Who had? I don't know. I was gonna say like best shooter. Let's like Angie. Who was the most? Like who? Who is that player that you just want on your team? Yeah. At the end of the line, like that championship game that you just absolutely. Who's who, who taking that final who's shot? Who's taking the final shot? Who's taking the final shot? Are we talking about girls basketball? Like in my real life. Let's do girls. Let's do girls. Yeah. Let's do girls. Let's 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 do women. Talking about girls basketball in my real life, and this is no smoke. I will take me, you, and Shania and put us against three girls anywhere, anytime, any day. Ooh. Oh, and we, 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 hey, we want all the smoke right here. And we want all we, the smoke. And, and all our coaches know we, 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 that we was that, we was that deal. We should have been, honestly, y'all, we should have been like the little. We should have been much, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. much so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we should have been way more successful than, than when we were. were. Because we had too many, we had too much freaking talent on that team. And it was yeah. ridiculous. We, yeah. We did. And I, I feel like the, even today, any girls want to get it, we can go oh, shoot the ball. I feel like, I can, do you still play? Bro, I feel like I'm going to drop 20 right now today. For sure. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I can't drop 20 today. I can definitely defend. I can definitely be a good passer. Yes. I can help oh, yeah. No, don't no, judge with the <laughs> hey, point guard for sure. We not we not relying on Jazz to shoot the ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna be to shoot the ball. I mean, I can, I think it was more of a confidence thing, but I, I'm not going to drop twenty. I could if I needed to, because I I'm see more the talent a today. Like, though, I'm more like, hey, I want to distribute the ball. Yeah, you're two point guard for sure. Point guard. If but, I need to score, I can, but that's not my main goal. I, when I go yeah. watch, I've watched a few games. I'm like the talent now and the talent that we had to go against. We can Nothing. easily go right now at yeah. 33 something years old and yeah. get these folks a run for their money for sure. I uh, I watched these girls at the Big 12 tournament last weekend mm-hmm. and the heart, the heart, everyone's so worried about being cute that yes. the heart is not there. It's not there. I would dog these young girls. Dog. I would make them cry. Dog them. Angie Kreiner. Dog them. I think so. I told my brother that the other day. I'm like, bro, like, I can legit get a. Let me just give me about three, four days getting some sprint shape. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm giving yeah. them folks. I'm giving them folks the business for sure. And hey, you're not gonna stop me going to the basket. That's what you're not gonna. Absolutely, do. nobody could. <laughs> nobody. Could. Nobody, I, nobody could. I'm gonna go reiterate what I said in the beginning. You need an Angie Kreiner. <laughs> on for sure, team. nobody can stop Angie. Nobody she got to the basket. I don't even know half the time how I she got to the basket. How. Nobody's stopping her. 
Nobody. You guys remember that time we were playing BYU? Yes. And we were down one. We were down two. And I think Shade threw it to Jazz. Jazz threw it to me. You were like closest to the bench. And I don't think I was supposed to shoot the last shot, but I was going to take it anyway. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it was one of the last shots. Yeah. And their big goal was in the paint. I had did this half ass Euro and I made the N one. And I come down the bench and I turn around to her and I. I I say something probably really mean to her. And I'm slapping hands as we go around the bench, and we end up beating BYU. And yeah, they were I that. Yeah. it was just the little moments like that. You look back like, man, we've done some things in life. Like, bro, I feel yeah, like if Angie yeah. was still on the team, we played Little Rock. I feel like her and Chastity Reed would, would be entertainment. Yeah, but yeah. just trash talk. Yeah, because Angie yeah. was not feeling like that girl trash talk. Like girl. Oh. No. No, it was a little chick that played for Oklahoma. I told you, horrible. He talked. She was great. Yeah, she was I good. Mean, phenomenal. Oh, girl. Oh, girl. Was talked good. so much trash. I was. Like, Did you? I don't know. I think Angie probably know who she was. Something. <laughs> uh, I can't think. She was a, right. a little, little thing. A small, small thing. Yeah. yeah. And she was. Yeah. Like, she was really talented, but. I mean, coming down the court, be this. I'm like, whoa, do we have to? <laughs> well, oh, we got to come up. Why, why, why do I have to be a B? Like, <laughs> like, well, talk, us out of, okay. talk us out of our name. Right, no. right. <laughs> no. no. I remember her. She was mean. Yeah. Yeah. So. This was great. This, this was, was good. This was amazing. So. First, first episode, Angie Kreiner. Let's go. Only right. Only right. Only right. We have right. Angie it's Kreiner. Right. Angie Kreiner. <laughs> what they used to call you, Angie? Angie the Cry Baby Kreiner. <laughs> Who called it? Yes, like, you can remember that. I did. I don't remember nothing. <laughs> she don't remember nothing. Yeah. Who cool. used to call you that? I don't know. I remember you called me that. <laughs> did I give you that name? That's a name from Nini. Did I give you that name? Nobody called you. No, Angie. Like, I feel like we no. were at like Who? North Texas or something. They made that up. Maybe North Texas. I feel like yeah. North Texas was horrible. I told you the other day. Yeah. When I cut all my hair off and went natural, they go, when I was shooting free throws, they were like, is that a man? Like, Maybe I did give Angie that name. Yeah. I was going to say, no, I don't remember. Angie, yeah. cry baby. No, I, I feel like anybody. I, I don't feel like I called her cry that. baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm, I'm telling you, you I'm gonna I'm look it up. You need to get Shay Scott on here. See what she talking about. Ooh, Ooh, let's get Shay Scott. We might get Shay on here. Hey, one last thing, and then we need to wrap. Yeah, up. Alicia Dunn. Yeah, killing it. I talked to you her Saturday. You talked to her. Yeah, her mom, mom, good friends. They're, they're friends. Her mom and Angie' mom's good friends. She. Yes. And I was in Kansas City at the Big Twelve tournament. So uh, this is. Two weekends ago, the 10th, yeah. and I called her to see if she wanted to go to the game, but she was uh, coaching high school basketball. She was out of town. Yeah, how's she killing it? And her team has like, won multiple championships. Yeah. Uh, she's been a- awarded for like the best coach, coach, of, coach of the year or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you know what's crazy is that she was be real shot. That's the thing. Like it's crazy how bad. Like that's what I'm saying. It's the game of life. It right. teaches you so much and it yes. prepares you for so much. Yeah. She works a regular job, then goes and coaches those girls. Really? Oh, wow. Yep. Yep. I'm like, good for you. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's it's a lot of time, but she's committed to those girls, and I pray that she gets that basketball Scott that uh, coaching contract she's looking for. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. One time for Alicia for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's game, y'all. It was good. <laughs> Angie, thank you, thank you, thank you. We need to get together and have a breakfast or lunch or something. Yeah, we do. Let's we'll see, see you guys. Yeah, we day. should. Next time you went visit your sister, let us know. Okay, I'll let you know then. Thanks. All right, thanks, Angie.